good morning friends pardon me if i have made some of you a little uneasy with this rather blase title of my presentation the audience of an intellectually elite institution like this one may have pondered a bit at the network architecture that links typography to one's pet's dinner but that exactly was my idea to create a bit of a mystery around this morning's topic but rest be assured i will try not not to divert too much from design and typography i wish to tell you this marvelous audience the story of outlook magazine that started in 1995 and since have had a momentous run for the past 17 years mid 90s in india was a rapidly changing time in most spheres of life the consumption pattern and the quantum we consumed were changing at a speed that was never before seen when we talk today of indian economy is being transformed from an elephant to an asiatic tiger then the mid 90s was when this tiger was a cub and at its energetic best the end of license quota raj brought about by narsimha rao manmohan singh duo in 1992 triggered an unprecedented inertia in private ventures it was not just the stock markets that saw the red flag furled at it the domestic consumption markets too cramped so far by soviet style state controlled economy unleashed itself on a choice starved middle class the local kirana stores began to sell products those carried a stamp of brand and were packaged smartly the days of buying things by weight and carrying it in crummy paper bags were beginning to be a thing of the past the new found choice the indian consumer was experiencing on the store shelves naturally led to the need for these competing products to be advertised this meant a boon for the cash strapped print publishing industry a welcome source of revenue generated by product advertising was beginning to emerge which also meant a venture to start up an independent news publication banking purely on advertising revenue was looking a certain possibility it is interesting to remember here that print journalism in india was at its robust best just after the end of imposition of emergency by indira gandhi in 1977 gagging of the free press had resulted a lot of steam to be let out a plethora of news magazines and newspapers appeared on the scene in the late 70s all the big editors you find today were the front rank artillery of the glorious 80s of print journalism but barring just a few most of these publications shut shop as soon they had opened this happened because most of these publication though some of them were of high quality were not run like a profit center as in a journal that could financially sustain itself through self generated revenue so the minute a journal published something that conflicted with the interest of its patrons monetary monetary ties were snapped resulting in closure of the publication the booming of the stock markets in the 90s the explosion of fmcgs the advent of new kinds of automobiles on the indian road the indian middle class appetite for white goods all this and more brought in advertising revenue that would give the much needed oxygen supply to the gasping independent news journalist ventures the possibility of bringing out a news publication that was free of government aid which usually would come in the form of government adver advertisement or financial support that eventually would get snapped off the minute the self interest of the patron came in conflict seemed real outlook was born at a time when the financial climate in india was ripe but we had a few other things going for us too for starters 
We chose India today, the market leaders in the news magazine category at that time, to be our principal competitors. The benefits of this were twofold. Firstly, our opponent's enormous circulation figures shook us out of our initial inertia and spurred us to try and match them. Secondly, IT then was a fortnightly, and by the time it appeared on the stands, much of its currency was lost. The long gap between two issues robbed it of the surprise element so vital to news magazine and gave its content a boring predictability. Moreover, India today in the 95 looked visually tired with this cluttered look, inelegant typography, toss away visuals and lack of attention to detail. It was designed more or less by default, not by professional designers, but by layout artists who rigidly followed an already tight template. A BBC correspondent at the time, leafing through a copy of the magazine, remarked to me that IT's Macintosh seems to have gone amok. The other news magazines, Sunday, Frontline, and The Week, were feeble challengers to IT's muscles. To keep myself within the goalposts of this lecture's topic, I'll spare you, this lovely attentive audience, the journalistic journey of Outlook and instead narrate Outlook's look story, in which I had a small part to play, how we evolved a visual narrative for storytelling. Design is the frame that holds a magazine together. It is the subtle yet vital component that distinguishes one magazine from the other. Without design, a magazine is a merely a melange of desperate elements. With it, it is a disciplined entity. We wanted a, a design that would be simple, but expressive in spirit. I'm speaking about design here, which is within the limited confines of news journalism. When I refer to design, the context here is visual journalism. The job on my hand was to create a design structure for the magazine that addressed three different groups, the user, the consumer, and the advertiser. For the benefit of those in the audience who are not familiar with the workings of a news publication, let me quickly explain how a design room functions within the editorial scheme of things. This graphic here would help you figure it out a little bit. A design room normally is headed by the art or the design director, who is assisted by fellow designers, illustrators, cartoonists, infographics, etc., etc. The design section is conjoined at hips with the photography section. The two departments weave the visual story together. In a standard visual structure, few elements are kept as variables while the others are constant. The design or the layout a full page of a newspaper or a multi-page story of a news magazine, as the case may be, is passed on to an entity known as the copy desk. Copy desk is the interface between the editorial and the readers. At the copy desk, editors fit the textual part of the story that includes things like headlines, captions, blurbs, etc. This was my first group, the user of the design, the copy desk. The design my team and myself was creating for the magazine had to be easy to use for the copy desk. It had to be quickly adaptable to the constantly changing scenarios of news environment. We believed if the first group, the user of the design, found the design comfortable to work with and prided itself in engaging with it creatively, the Two other groups, the consumer, as in the readers, and the advertiser, from who our paychecks came, could be roped into our conspiracy. The design mantra we gave ourselves was, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Simplicity of the design should be linked to making the magazine easy to read. The main thing about editorial design is that it should make things intuitively obvious. We employed minimalism, but 
We avoided minimalism to make the magazine look cold. In the design room, we were passionate and super serious about design. But at the same time, the designs we created had a, had a sense of play. When we started out, we had the privilege of not being weighed down by the greatness of our back issues. This allowed us a fair degree of leeway and an openness in dealing with the visual aspect of the magazine. Outlook's visual personality, we decided, will be elegant and minimalist with authoritative typography, sophisticated visuals and judicious use of color and lively pacing that would make the editorial material flow seamlessly from one story to the next. We would try to keep a surprise element for the reader, but not in a way that would make him wonder about the mental health of our Macintosh. <coughs> Conventionally, news magazines those days, be it Indian or foreign, used a thick red band on the top of the page. The objective was to encase the page, giving a sort of a contour to the content. The top thick band also lent a sense of urgency to the display. In most cases, a news magazine page would be boxed by rules of various thicknesses. We did away with this convention and instead used a thick blue rule at the bottom of the page. Though we went ahead with the conventional three column format, we decided not to have any rules between the columns or a box around the page. Editorially, Outlook had a dream inaugural issue. The cover story we carried was the result of an opinion poll conducted in Kashmir Valley, which claimed 77% of Kashmiris wanting Azadi from the Indian state. The Outlook inaugural issue acted like a red rag furled at the extreme Hindu right political party, the Shiva Sena. Shiva Sena Supremo, Mr. Bal Thakre, sent hundreds of his goons to ransack our editorial office and thrash us up. Without having to spend a single rupee in advertising of our news magazine, Mr. Thakre's action ensured us becoming a household name in India. We were the messengers who were shot at. Our readers were extremely sympathetic and supportive to us right from the very first issue. Both on the cover as well as the opening spread of the cover story, we used a bold, in-your-face design. We used condensed Helvetica font for our headlines that gave us an urgent look to our page. Conventionally, serif fonts were used, but we decided we would use serif headlines only for our feature stories. Another cloud crowning glory of our inaugural issue was the excerpts from the then Prime Minister Narsimha Rao's yet to be published novel. That the PM was writing a novel was being talked about in hushed tones in the corridors of power. But nobody imagined till we published the excerpts on how raunchy and scandalous the novel was. Outlook became the toast for the season. We were written about, due to this story, all over the international press. The legendary cartoonist Mr. Rajit Nainan drew a brilliant sketch of Narsimha Rao that helped us design a lavish spread for the story. When we started out in 1995, it was not so easy to buy or source fonts as we have today. The choice was limited. Online purchase which is a norm today, was not possible. One had to depend on the local vendors for the fonts. We chose, after much deliberation, stone print to be our font for the body copy. Stone print had a good excite, and its serifs were well formed that helped in reading big masses of text. Though the font was elegant, personally I felt, Stone print to be a bit too old fashioned for a brand new magazine, which editorially wanted to be irreverent right from the word go. Luckily, our design went down 
well among our peers. Seven years later, that is, seven eventful years in the short span of a news magazine, we had already chronicled three general elections, two cricket World Cups, one war and two nuclear blasts, a hijack hostage, hostage drama and a plenty more. We had begun to feel the need to redesign the magazine. The primary objective of a redesign of a magazine or a newspaper is to reorganize its contents. That has, due to several modifications and innovations caused by the need to adjust content of the day, has lost its unique visual personality. Easier put, every edition has a slightly different ask than its previous edition in its design demands. Along the course, every cook adds its own spice to the broth. So after a point, you realize your, co your color palette is very different from what you had started out. The font library begins to look like a letter asset. The style box contains many unconnected design elements. In other words, a royal mess. Redesign is a splendid opportunity in putting the house back in order. It also brings in an element of renewed energy among the user of the design, the copy desk. Redesign also helps the editorial to bring in fresh ideas and discard the ones those are not working. But redesign is a subtle art. It is like producing good wine. It must be handled with care and above all patience so that the comfort level of the reader is undisturbed. In the summer of 2002, I met the art director of the Guardian newspaper in London. Guardian was and is a visual delight. I regard Guardian typography to be the most elegant in the business. I was looking for a new font for Outlook redesign. The Guardian art director suggested me a type foundry in London called the Fontworks. Fontworks showed me their bouquet of fonts and I found them impressive. They had worked upon both serif and sans serif rather well. We chose News 14 to be our body copy font for the redesign. We replaced our news story headline font from condensed Helvetica to a more stylish Gil Sands. We changed the design of all our regular pages. Barring the masthead, we almost changed everything in the design. And one fine week, confident as a brat, we launched the redesigned outlook to our readers. The reaction was disastrous. The readers hated the new look. A few readers on our letters page demanded my sacking. My nervous editor asked me to tweak the design a bit. The best option for me at that point was to go back to the basics. I employed the thick red band on top, tried and tested formula, and it worked. But the choice of typography was correct. It gave Outlook a nice, contemporary new look. News 14 was an elegant font indeed. The combination of Gil Sands and Bliss as a news headline fonts and Walburn and feature headline fonts complemented News 14 very well. Outlook in yet another design avatar. In the constantly changing paradigm of news journalism, the need to reinvent is constant too. Though print publication in India, unlike our Western counterparts, is a sunrise industry here, yet the space for a weekly news magazine is ever shrinking. Added to that is the variety of choices the reader has today. In 1995, when Outlook began, there were just a handful of magazines on the stands compared to the hundreds the readers can choose today. 
The reader in the 21st century is no longer a king. He is kinky too. The 21st century consumer considers loyalty to be a canine virtue. An intelligent person is the one who is discerning too. Outlook faces a stiff competition every week at the stands. It is like walking on the conveyor belt facing the wrong side. We try to reinvent all the time. Sometimes we fail, but that doesn't deter us in our will to take the reader by surprise. We think the element of surprise is the elixir for survival in our business. Sometimes we do get a bit of a jolt when the elixir turns a bit poisonous that gives us indigestion. The visuals you saw just now on display is the outlook in its new avatar. We changed our fonts and design yet again. Once bitten, but never to be shy for another bite. In 2006, we replaced News 14 with Mercury, Bliss with Retina, Gilsands with Gotham, and Walburn with DDOT. During my many visits at the Society of News Design conferences, I came across the works of the incredibly gifted type designers, Hoffler and Ferrer Jones. Seeing the works of Hoffler and Ferrer Jones, I had shifted my loyalties from the font works. After all, I am the consumer here and have a right to be kinky. The reactions to the redesigned outlook were, anybody guess, was disastrous, again. The readers rejected us outright, yet again. Hate mails and the demand for my head were asserted without any signs of sympathy. In the glorious tradition of Outlook, most of the letters those hurled abuses at the design were printed with relish in our letters page. But this time around, our skin had developed a few more layers and got thicker. We refused to change. My logic was, a design that replaces an older design will always be difficult to accept initially. The resistance is caused due to the familiarity with the way things were. A change requires readjusting and we are all creatures of habit and acquaintances. It's like changing your toothbrush. When you change your toothbrush, it always feels a little strange in your mouth. You long for the older one. Yet, you carry on with the new toothbrush because the older one had to be discarded. And before you know, you have adapted yourself to the change. The present design we have employed works very well with our editorial needs. It is flexible to long format journalism. That is when we do stories, those go on 16 to 18 pages. A case in point being Arundhati Roy's essays. They are read worldwide, giving Outlook a global footprint. Roy's essays evoke extreme viewpoints in our letters page, giving the magazine a vibrant, argumentative flavor. An important milestone in Outlook's typographic journey was introducing the new symbol for the rupee. I take immense pride for being able to adapt the rupee symbol in the fonts we use in Outlook, that is Mercury, Retina and Gotham. On behalf of the entire Outlook team, I extend our gratitude to IIT Powai, Professor G. V. Srikumar, <laughs> and his brilliant team to have adapted the rupee symbol for Outlook. Many, many thanks, guys. The Outlook design story will not be complete if I don't speak about our covers. Right from the beginning, we were well aware that the cover of the magazine would be a critical factor in determining whether the reader would ultimately buy Outlook from the stands. A good design is one that is designed end-to-end, -end. the design elements closely tailored to the product and vice versa.
we identified four key areas to address the issue. Identity. The cover has a vital role to play in establishing a magazine's brand identity. Type, color, image style, number of cover lines all conspire to personify the brand. Image. The main image and the masthead are the first things the reader sees when surveying a newsstand. So, week after week, it is essential to get right the overall composition of the cover and choose the right image that captures the essence of the cover story. Impact. To grab the attention of a potential Outlook reader, we must get them through the front door and make covers that would make readers curious about what's inside. Information. Great cover lines are like poetry, tightly written and with the ability to move the reader. In our anniversary issues, one of 14th or 15th, we invited not noted photographer Dayanita Singh to choose our best covers. Here are Dayanita's outlooks best with her comments. A great photo by itself does not make a great cover. These are Dayanita's comments. Nor does, it, nor does a headline. It is when they come together in a perfect balance of idea, image and typography that a cover good enough to launch a thousand subscription is born. This is from the first year, 1995. Where this blood, these are her comments, where this blood splattered photo and typewriter font meet, a crime thriller, thriller begins, like the cover of an action film DVD. It conveys suspense and urgency. This was uh, an event that happened in Bombay. I think it was Wahid's killing. He was gunned down by the mafia of, I think it was East West Travels he owned. 1996, when Narsimha Rao and Congress government went for election and lost, this was a photograph taken by uh, our picture editor at that time, Prashant Panjiyar, the gifted Prashant Panjiyar. And it was interesting that, uh, you know, cutouts were used. Now, in earlier election uh, and election uh, campaigning would generate a lot of uh, photographs and color and noise, which is not there today because of the election commissioner's commissions, uh, you know, strict rules of how much you can spend and so covering elections have become far more boring than they used to be. This again is one of uh, the special issues Outlook did. It was in the 50 years of India's independence. We used a special color gold for the cover. And it had great articles by, by very well-known writers. Kushwan Singh, Mukul Kesavan, Vikram Chandra, a lot of good people wrote in this. This again is a cover which we did with typography. The typographical cover ironically overturns the celebrity sense of the word shortlisted by using it to a a bunch poll candidate with grimy records. <coughs> this is another special issue we did. But uh, the unfortunate thing about this issue, the, although the issue editorially was very good, and again, we had great writers. Uh, V.S. Naipaul wrote for our magazine. It's not very often that Mr. Naipaul writes for magazines or newspapers. And besides, Salman Rushdie wrote. But unfortunately, uh, as we were about to hit the stands or close the issue, there was a huge cyclone in Orissa. And there was like devastation all over the place. So it looked strange that when the country was 
hit by such bad news that Outlook would put such a celebratory million, millennium issue and because the issue was called, uh, called Millennium Special, it was the end of 99. So we put a 16 uh, page uh, sort of package on Orissa, Orissa's Hour of Despair. Bill Clinton had come to India and so had Photoshop, so we were trying all kinds of crazy things. <laughs> but those days when I did this, I remember it, uh, it really uh, interested people and I got a, got a call from the US Embassy that uh, if they could have a copy, the original copy. And uh, we actually made a big copy, almost a life size, almost this size as you see here in the projection, we had sent it to the White House. And uh, this, uh, I got a letter from Clinton thanking me for this. The magazine, as is the idea of using a boldly illustrated Parvez Musharraf, the little boy denotes the scale of things. This is your city. It died in 2002, 10 years ago. <laughs> These kinds of covers are a little difficult to make because the visuals available are very few. I mean, uh, there are probably one or two visuals you have and everybody has that visual. There are no exclusive exclusivity to the, at least the photograph that is available to you. This again is one of our special issues and, uh, and uh, we got inspired by this uh, painting, everybody knows. The Last Supper. But unfortunately, I could not use the full painting on the cover because of its, uh, because of its uh, you know, dimensions. It was too long. And if we were to carry all 11 of them, it was becoming very small. So we, we sort of cropped it from the sides. And instead, we used, inside, we used a big uh, full spread, double spread kind of a visual of the same thing. We do this kind of a cover a lot, if you are readers of Outlook, you'd see. Because it attracts readers' attention, I mean, it provokes you to buy the magazine. If you notice, we have a left-hand corner picture also. That many times plays uh, an important role in the magazine because many times our stories are very serious or, you know, too political. But we, we have to do it because that's the ask of the day. Being a news magazine, we have to, we have to uh, put news on the cover. But sometimes it gets a little boring. So that corner where we used a little offbeat story or a feature story, really helps in the sale of the magazine and readability. It's a famous Ragurai picture. Despite trying to follow these guidelines, the guidelines I just mentioned before I showed you the covers, we have got it wrong on a few occasions. In an environment where information travels so incredibly fast, how does one find an arresting visual that the reader has not already seen on TV or the morning newspaper or the internet? Some news events, like the 9-11, generate only one news image, which the Outlook reader would have seen a thousand times before we could reach the stands. For an event like this, we displayed the most iconic image of the news on the front cover and relied on a reader's faith in us that Outlook will offer something new that he has not already seen or read before. Here I pause to clear the mystery behind the title of my lecture, Dressing Up a Dog's Dinner. Let me clarify that the term dressing up is not meant to be negative. Dressing up doesn't mean that we manufacture a story nor do we sensationalize a story. 
Dressing up merely means packaging a story in a manner that it makes the story appear inviting to the readers. The nature and constraint of a weekly format is as such that by the time we get to the news and publish it, the story that remains for us is quite like a leftover from the table that has already been dined upon by a variety of news hounds, 24-7 TV, daily newspaper, internet, etc. By the time Outlook reaches the newsstand, my reader has got all the news. Some of the news that dominated the week may just be pouring out of his ears. This is where the dressing up is so very necessary. Dressing up is done not just visually, but also by how the story is written. The spin that is given to a news development in a way that triggers enquiry in the reader's mind. Many important stories keep developing during the course of the week. In such a scenario, the manner in which the story is tackled so that we don't get overtaken by the events and so on and so forth. The visual narrative of the magazine plays a key role in the dressing up process. It also gives a pace and a rhythm to the magazine. If we were to personify a visual narrative, the best personification will be that of a DJ in a club. All that a DJ does is he plays music that already exists and possibly played by the same audience he is playing for. But the DJ's skill lies in how he puts what is available to him in a way that binds his audience together. The art director is like that DJ. He sets the pace of the journal. A lot depends on how the visual hierarchy is established. We in Outlook over the years have found our own style of visual journalism and have, and have devised a few thumb rules, though they are not carved in stone. For instance, while designing the cover for a news event that would allow us to choose from many images, we, almost as a rule, choose the image which is not quite mainstream. Even if that particular image is only obliquely linked to the cover story. But the reader, as we found out, can be unforgiving if we err too much on the side of adventurousness. The reader response to the Outlook cover November 12, which you see, Clueless in Pakistan, taught us a valuable lesson about the reader's sensitivity. The lesson we learned from this error of judgment was wounded babies make for an oppressive visual and hence are a complete no-no for a cover. So let me quickly take this visual off. There isn't a single dull moment in the design room of a news weekly. And I have never regretted my decision to be an editorial designer. When receiving the Lifetime Achievement Award at the Society of News Design Conference, the venerable Louis Silverstone, known as the grandfather of news design, narrated why he chose visual journalism as his career. He said, of the many odd jobs I did as a teenager, one of them was as a milk delivery boy. One morning, when I knocked at a door to deliver milk, a beautiful young blonde wearing a diaphanous negligee opened the door. On finding me there, her, fell, her face fell in disappointment. I thought it was the newspaper boy, she said. That was the day I decided to make a career in newspaper. <laughs> It's true, there is something irres irresistibly sexy about the business of news. Thank you. <laughs>